Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so this is going to be hopefully a relatively quick video going over how you can use conventional mode in the uh, stabilized receivers but make it a little bit more useful. Now normally the suggestion would just be to use quick mode for most people because I don't know anybody that actually uses the hover and knife edge modes that are available in the conventional um, mode selection style on these receivers but there's something kind of going on with the um, stabilized receivers with the newer firmwares when you use an SBUS redundancy receiver. Um, I'm not going to go over that <laughs> in this video, but I will copy my post into the description if you want to read about it. Basically, if you're using an R9 receiver for redundancy, you'll probably want to read that and watch this video. So with conventional mode on the uh, receivers here, um, it uses, unlike quick mode, it uses two channels to change the mode, uh, the gyro mode. So you have mode 1 selection on channel 14 and mode 2 on channel 15. And it is through a combination of those that you choose which mode you want to be in. So quick mode only has stabilized and automatic level and off obviously. And then conventional has a little bit more with hover and knife edge. However, to use them can be kind of confusing. And if you're not using just a switch or if you just want to use maybe hover mode, but you'll never use knife edge or the other way around, um, it can be kind of confusing to set up because all this tells you is down, mid, and up, which depending on your mixtures and how you want the switch to behave personally, may or may not actually be the case. So what I've done is took this kind of jumble of information and turn it into something a little bit more readable and more useful. Because rather than having to look at the position up, down, or middle, all you need to know really is what channel values they need to be for each mode. So I made this little chart here in Notepad to tell me which is which, and I'll put this in the description. Um, but this is a lot more useful than than that is. And for what it's worth, the 2000, 1500, 1000 translates into 1000 microseconds is negative 100, 1500 is zero, and 2000 is plus 100. So if we look at our mixers here, I have these two channels, and you can see that's what it corresponds to and if I look in the outputs this tells you you know 1000, 1500, and 2000. Knowing these we can do a lot more than just having to remember what each combination of these three positions and these three positions you gotta remember on two three position switches there's nine total different combinations that you can have. Well, it actually only uses five of those positions, but I mean, the switches can be in any of them. For the majority of people, myself included, that's no fun. Having to remember all those different combinations, not being able to change them, um, it's just not, it's not good. But knowing those values, we can do something different, which I think is a much better way of doing it. So I'm just gonna delete these. So now all I have left is the gain. So what I'm going to do is make a var for each channel. So I'm going to call one of them mode 1. I'm going to put that on channel 14. And I'm going to make another one called mode 2. And put that on channel 15. We have the channels, but they don't do anything yet. And the reason that I'm using VARs, and the reason that knowing the actual channel positions is useful, is because with a VAR, all you do is tell it a switch position and what you want the channel to be at. So I'm going to make four of them. And, um, uh, Technically, you only need three, but I'm going to do four. 
So, um, the way I'm going to set this up personally, and you can do it however you want, is basically a direct replication of how it works with quick mode. In quick mode, you have one channel for the modes. You have none, stabilized, and auto level. And then you have another channel, channel 16, which is the whole reason I'm kind of going through this video, uh, for emergency auto level. I never really saw the point to that because channel 14 going into auto level mode does exactly the same thing that channel 16 going into automatic level mode does. There is zero difference in behavior. Frankly, I don't know why that's even there, but it is, so I'm going to replicate it. What I normally do with it then is I'll have one switch for mode selection with off, stabilized, auto level. And I'll have another one, usually a momentary switch like this one, for the rescue panic mode. So what I'm going to do here in this video is replicate that behavior in conventional mode. I'm not even going to bother with the other modes like hover and knife edge. But after I do this, I will actually show you how you can use those in a more useful way. So I'm going to start. The way VARs work, it's similar to logic switches, where the higher up on the list it is, the higher priority it takes. So for example, I've got two here, and I have one where this switch is in the middle, and I have another one where this t momentary switch uh, is depressed. So each one has its own value output, and you'll see right now with this switch here, it's outputting 0%. But if I hit this switch, the top one takes priority, and now it's outputting 100%. So the higher up on the list it is, if that one's activated, that's what the channel will output. So, incidentally, SH down is actually what I want for this, so um, that's correct. So what I need to do is look at this chart. So for automatic level mode, channel 14 should be at 2000, and channel 15 should also be at 2000. And so in this VAR, which is for channel 14, when this is hit, it should be at 2,000 microseconds, which is what 100% is. It's the same thing. And if you look down here, you can actually see it. So when I hit that switch, it goes to 2,000 microseconds or 100%. Now I'm going to go to the other one, which is for channel 15, and do the same thing. So for 15, automatic level is 2,000 microseconds or 100%. Now you'll see that it's already there, and that's because by default a var is just a fixed value and it doesn't have any things that change it, and the default value is 100%. So right now it's already at 2000, but I'm still going to make one of these for that switch. So you see it highlights and it goes to 100%. I went ahead and created three more, a total of four of them. And since I'm already on the channel 15 one, I might as well just go ahead and finish doing this one. So the way I'm going to set it up is up is off, middle is stabilized, down is auto level. So what I'm going to do is go to this one, sign at a position, go to this one, sign at a position, go to this one, and sign at a position. So each of these now has its own position. I'm going to look here, so uh, for channel 15, for it to be off, which is what I want the top position to be, it actually doesn't matter, because if you look at this, for the gyro to be off, channel 14 is in the middle, and it doesn't matter where 15 is. So technically, I don't actually have to do anything here, but I'm going to pretend that it does matter, and I'm going to put it at 2000 microseconds, so we're 100%. Then I want stabilized mode, and for channel 15, it needs to be right in the center at 1500 microseconds. So when this is in the middle, this one needs to be at 1500 microseconds, which is 0%. And if I go down here, you can see that is the case. So up here, it's 2000. In the middle, it's 1500. Then I'm going to do automatic level mode, which again is 2000 microseconds on channel 15 and it's already there. So we have basically 2,000, 1,500, 2,000. As well as, if I hit this 
temporary switch for panic it goes up to 2000 now I'm going to go to the one for channel 14 and do the same thing so I'm going to put this up at the top and for gyro off channel 14 should be at 1500 which is 0% so I'll go in here it's already there so now it's at 1500 gyro is completely off I'm going to go ahead and give it the middle and down position and for the middle and down it'll be 2000 and 2000 which incidentally it's already at so you can see now I have 0, 100, 100 also known as 1500, 2000, 2000 so that's actually it to replicate quick mode so I'm going to test it here zoom out a little bit so it's visible if I do this switch up it should be off and if I move the gyro around it is off it doesn't do anything now if I move it to the middle position it should be in stabilized mode which is right yep does exactly that it's moving a lot because I have the gain cranked way up and there you go and all the way down should be self level mode which you can see it sure is and then we can also test the auto level panic mode and you can see with the receiver sideways when I hit that switch it goes into auto level mode regardless of where this is so I can have it in gyro mode and hit panic and it goes into auto level mode or I can have it completely off and it still goes into auto level mode so that's it um, this is quick mode but in conventional mode <laughs> and if you wanted to say have instead of off stabilized auto level if you wanted, which is what I want to fly with normally, is gyros on in that position, um, auto level in that position, and off in that position, all you have to do is go back through, look at this, and change all of the values to match. So in this case, I'm going to change it to gyro is on when the switch is up. So that's going to be that, that one right there. And if I look here, channel 14, for stabilized, it should be at 2,000. Right now, it's at zero, so I'm going to go back up to 100%. And then for auto level, I want it to be also at 2,000, which it already is. And then for all the way down, I want it off, which is 1,500 microseconds, or 0%. And this was for channel 14, so I'm going to go to 15 and do the same thing. So with this switch up, I want it to be stabilized. Channel 15 and stabilized should be right in the middle at 1500, which is 0%. And then I want the middle position to be auto level, which is 2000. Middle position, change that to 100%. And in the down position, I want it to be off. Um, and again, in uh, off mode, it doesn't matter where 15 is at, so I'm not going to change it. So now, the behavior, just by changing those uh, six or five values, now, with the switch up, it is in stabilized mode. With the switch in the middle, it's in auto level mode. And with the switch down, it is off. It's that easy to change things. So there you go. That's how I do it, um, and that's how I recommend it. Now let's say you wanted to use hover mode also. Like if you wanted to put it on this switch here, and it goes into hover mode, how would you do that? Well, fairly simple, but a little bit less, because with these, you can't move them around. Um, so if you want to change it, if you want something else to be at the top, you have to add another one and then move all of them down by one. So let's do that. 
So if we look here, hover mode, channel 14 should be at 2000 and 15 should be at 1000. So I'm gonna go to my channel 14 mixer again, edit it. And so like I said, you can't move them around to change their priority. So when I add another one, what I'm gonna do is replicate the last one. Oops. So make that 0%. And I'm going to move them all down by 1. So change this one to the middle position. And change it to 100%. And I'm going to change this one to the up position. And that one's already at 100%, so it's fine. And so I'm going to put the hover mode on this switch. But I want automatic level mode to still be the highest priority. So no matter what mode it's in, if I hit this switch, it goes into hover or auto level mode. So I'm going to put the hover mode one right below the automatic level one. So I'm going to put this on that switch. So you can see when I hit hover mode switch, it changes to highlight that one. And if we remember right... Hover mode is channel 14 at 2000, which it already is. So don't have to change that one. And I'm going to go to 15 and do the same process. One second. All right, here we go. So SF hover mode, it goes to currently 0%. And I need that to be for channel 15, 1000 microseconds, which is negative 100%. So we will change that one to minus 100. So now, with this switch flipped, it is in hover mode. It's kind of hard to demonstrate, but I will try. So this is hover mode. It acts just like a gyro on aileron. I'm going to move the servo to the elevator so it'll be easier to show you that it's working. So you can see now with hover mode activated, the serv the elevator now servo is trying to give it elevator. And if I tilt this up, it changes. So this is, you know, the, the airplane's vertical, nose up. There's hover mode right there. It's, tr it's, it's a um, heading hold on elevator and it does the same on rudder as well. So it would be like this. So that's hover mode, but if I flip auto level mode on, it'll go into auto level mode. And if you wanted to use knife edge mode, you could just add another another one. Same process. Now, obviously, if you know that you're going to be using the knife edge and hover mode, just do this when you first create them. So you don't have to spend the time moving them down. But yeah, this, in my opinion, is one of the best ways that you can set up the conventional mode on these gyros and in fact I also use it um, for like I said the gyro game because you don't have to mess with curves you know if, if I was to do this with just like a normal free mix I would have first of all several mixers um, for each channel and the curves would be all wonky and all over the place this way all I have to do is tell it where I want the channel to be and it'll go there so now currently the operation is normal gyro and remember I moved the server to the elevator channel now so normal gyro auto level off hover mode and auto level. I do hope you found this video useful um, and hopefully it made sense and I wasn't just a, a talking camera for 20 minutes but uh, like I said I hope you found it useful and if you have any questions feel free to ask me uh, in the comments or on forums or Facebook or whatever. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.